Hi. I will show you some part of my PhD work that I've done with my advisor, Marcelo Barreiro. Well, we have the tropics and the extratropics and their two-way relationship. On one hand, we can have the tropics driving the extratropics. This is a very well-known phenomenon, and the typical example is the Niño Southern Oscillation. But wh what happens on the opposite direction? The extratropics driving the tropics. Is this possible? Well, this is not so well understood yet, but we have some evidence that this indeed happens. First of all, we have paleoclimatic studies. For example, here I show you something from Chang and Friedman. In here you can see a three time series uh, during the last glacier period. The first one is a proxy from Greenland temperature, so that's some time series from the extratropics. And then the second time series is uh, some proxies for hydrological changes in Cariaco Basin, Venezuela, so that's a tropical location. And the third time series are uh, proxies for hydrological changes in China, so that's located in the Asian monsoon region. What you can see with this three time series is that they are very well correlated, so somehow indicated that information somehow somehow uh, connects the extratropical region Greenland with the other two locations. Also, we have 20th century observations. For example, again from Chang and Friedman, here two time series. Uh, the first one is the North Atlantic SST anomaly, uh, detrended from June to September. And the second one is the silent rainfall anomaly that we have seen a lot this week, uh, showing some multi-decadal variability, and again you can see the, the two time series are very well correlated. Uh, last, we have numerical simulations. There's a lot of work that has been done on this issue. Here I will show you only two of them. On the left, you have a work from Chiang and Bits. What they do is they increase the ice in the northern hemisphere high latitudes, and what they found, find is that in that case, the, as you see in the, in the picture there, the tropical precipitation band shifts. That's the ITCC, the Intertropical Conversion Zone. It, uh, you have moistening in blue and rain in red. So that indicates that the ITCC shifting toward the south, that in that experiment is the warmer hemisphere. On the right, we can see something done by Kang et al. What they do is they take uh, aquaplanet simulations. They put an HCM coupled to a slab ocean model, but in aquaplanet mode. And again, they, uh, in, in contrapositions to imposing ice, what they impose is an interhemispheric gradient, thermal gradient. And what they find is, again, the same conclusion, that the ITCC shifts toward the warmer hemisphere, that in their case is also the southern hemisphere. So, the same conclusion in all the works, the ITC always shifts toward the warmer hemisphere. So, which is the objective of this work is to investigate the ITC response to an extratropical thermal forcing using realistic boundary surface condition that in contraposition to the aquaplanet simulations. Also, we want to determine the relative roles of the atmosphere, the sea surface temperature, that I will call SST, and the land surface temperatures, that I will call LST. So, our methodology. We are going to perform uh, model simulations with the ICDP SPD, HCCM, and we are going to couple it to two slab uh, models, one from the, for the ocean and one for land. So, just thermodynamic couple. Our surface boundary conditions are realistic, so no aqua planet in this case. Our simulations are run for 40 years, and we are going to play with different configuration of the models, changing the region of application of the two slab models that we have. So, extratropical forcing we are going to impose. Which one? Just to give you some motivation, here I put something from uh, Folland et al. This is the global border summer SST pattern associated with the Sahel drought, started in the late 70s and 70s. And what you see is a negative SSTs in the northern hemisphere and positive SSTs in the southern hemisphere. So that's an interhemispheric SST gradient. So with this motivation in mind, with our extratropical forcing will look something like this. We are going to impose a warm, warming in the northern hemisphere, high latitudes, and a cooling in the southern hemisphere. 
To make it extratropical, we are going to put it only poleward of 40 degrees, and the global mean is zero. So, first experiment. This experiment is the one where the two slab uh, models, the for sea and for land, are applied globally. From now on, all my plots are going to look something like this. It will be anomalies with respect to control. That, uh, with that I mean, for each configuration of the model, I have two runs. One is the control run, that is just the model running along, and the, then I have the uh, forced run. In this forced run, I impose this warming in the northern hemisphere and cooling in the southern hemisphere, and all the plots are going to be anomalies with respect to the control. Also, I'm only going to show uh, annual means, so I'm not showing any seasonal cycle here. So this first plot is near surface air temperature. As you can see, we have a positive anomalies in the northern hemisphere and negative anomalies in the south. That means that there is a generalized warming in the northern hemisphere and a generalized cooling in the southern hemisphere. Remember that the uh, imposed forcing was only applied poleward of 40 degrees, but here you can see that the signal in temperature penetrates this barrier, barrier of 40 degrees and reaches to the tropical region. In the extratropics, we can see the maximum anomalies are here in the northern Atlantic of about 16 degrees, and here in the south, uh, south Pacific and close to Antarctica, about minus 16 degrees, so it's quite a huge anomaly. And in the tropical region, we can see there's some signal uh, being the signal over Africa, the maximum one of about mm, 9 or 10 degrees Celsius, so it's also quite a huge anomaly. What happens with precipitation, that is the focus of this study, we see that in extratropics there's not much signal, and in the tropics we see a lot of signal. We see a positive band uh, in the northern tropics followed by a negative band in the southern tropics. That means that the ITCC is displacing towards the north. That again is displacing to the warm hemisphere, so consistent with many other works other authors did. So, until this point, we've, we found again what other authors did with some other models and some other configurations. So, the next question will be, are these STCC shifts that we are seeing possible without changes in the tropical SSTs? To answer that, we will perform a new simulation. We will repeat the experiment, but now keeping the tropical SST fixed. By tropical, I mean uh, 30 degrees south, 30 degrees north. So, now, Results for this experiment, fixed tropical SST, and I don't touch the slab lab model. That's still applied globally. On the left, just for reference, the original experiment where the global slab models were, the global slab models were applied, and on the right, the new experiment. So fixed tropical SST. What I see is that, of course, in the tropical oceans, I don't have any anomaly. That's because I impose that there can't be any anomaly there. On the extratropics, I see mostly the same signal, and uh, in tropical land, what I see is that uh, it only remains some warming over Africa that still, it's not 10 degrees like it was there, but it's around 7 degrees, the maximum amplitude, so there's still a lot of land response in tropical Africa. What happens in precipitation? What we see is that, well, in, over the Pacific, the ITCC shifts almost vanished, over the Atlantic Ocean, we still have something, but small. This something small is around 20% of the magnitude of the previous experiment. And what we see is that over tropical Africa, we also still have something, and this something is about 60% uh, of magnitude. So, are these ITC shifts that we are still seeing over the Atlantic and over Africa possible without changes in the tropical SST, nor, pos nor changes in the land surface temperature over Africa. To answer that, again, a new experiment, and now we add to the fixed tropical SST, we add fixed land surface temperature over Africa. So we switch off the land surface temperature changes over Africa and see what happens. So fixed tropical SST, fixed temperature of the land over Africa. Uh, again, on the, on the left, you see the original experiment with the global slab models, and now the new experiment. What we see is that what happens over Africa, now the warming is very weak. Now it passed from 10 degrees of maximum here to about 3 or 4. 
in precipitation, what we see is that the signal we had in the Atlantic and over Africa completely vanished. So there's no shift in the GCC. So up to this point, the conclusion is that the land surface temperature over Africa is essential to maintain a shift in the GCC when the tropical GCC is not allowed to change. So the next question is, well, how is this teleconnection between the high latitudes and Africa generated? To answer that, uh, well, what we did is we studied the energy balance in, in the simulations. And what we saw was that the longer radiation effects was the one that dominates. So longer radiation effect can be decomposed into the clear sky effect plus the cloud effects. We analyze the clouds and see only small changes. So our hypothesis is that the clear sky effect is the one dominant. To test that, we perform a new experiment. Now, keeping the fixed tropical SSD and turning off the clear sky longer effect on the model to see if that, that was the, the one co causing the response over Africa. So on the left, you have the experiment with just fixed tropical SSDs, where we obtain a lot of response over Africa. And on the right, the new experiment that uh, we add to the fixed tropical SSD, this uh, uh, turning off of the clear sky long wave effect. And when we see this over Africa, the warming is not slowly reduced. So it goes from seven degrees to around three maximum response. So what we are proposing, the physical mechanism we are proposing of this teleconnection from the high latitudes to the temperature of the land in Africa is that first the forcing is imposed in the high latitudes that uh, generates a warmer, a warming there, which produce an increase in the humidity, a specific humidity. Then some atmospheric circulation changes affect the success of humidity to Africa making the clear sky uh, long wave radiation effect to increase there and then warming the surface there. So uh, all this was, was done with a slab ocean model. That is a very simple mo uh, model, just a thermodynamic coupling. coupling. Now we ask, well, what will happen if we use a more complex ocean model in the tropics? Does the SDC still shift or we don't see anything or is the is the signal stronger, is the signal weaker? What happens? So we are going to repeat the original experiment, but now coupling in the tropical band um, some ocean dynamics. Which model are, go are we going to couple there? We are going to use a reduced gravity ocean model, that's RGO, I will call. That's the same uh, Keynesian model, and just applied in the tropical band, 30 degrees south, 30 degrees north. north. Again, on the left, we have the original experiment for comparison, and on the right, the new experiment, so with this more complex ocean model in the tropics. This is, these are very new results. This is work on progress. What we see is that something we weren't expected, expecting is that in the tropics, the signal gets weaker. We were maybe expecting the contrary, but no, it gets, everything gets weaker especially in the Pacific Ocean. In the Asia tropics, everything is mostly the same, no changes, but in the tropics, everything gets weaker. What happens in precipitation? Again, everything weaker. Much weaker in the Pacific. In the Atlantic and in Africa, it's mostly the same, but in the Pacific, it's really, really much weaker than in the previous experiment. So conclusions. First, that the ITC shifts toward the warm sphere, but is in concordance with many other authors' studies. Then when we fix the tropical SST, we find that the ITCC response weakens a lot, but still we have some significant, significant signal over Africa and Atlantic. When in addition to fixing the tropical SST, we fix the land surface over Africa, we see that in that case, yes, the ITCC response almost vanishes. So the, con the conclusion of this is the summary is that the ITC response to the tropical forcing is not possible just through poorly atmospheric processes, but needs either the, ice, the SSTs or neither the land surface temperature over Africa to, to be generated. And on the last part of the talk about this medium complexity ocean model, what we can say, this is very preliminary, and we don't know why this is happening, but what we see is that the tropical ocean dynamics seems to somehow be, be weakening the response over the Pacific. And over the, Afri uh, over the Atlantic Ocean and Africa, we have similar signals 
again highlighting and indicated the importance of the land surface temperature over Africa to produce a response there. That's all. Thank you.